Hi everybody, it's me, Kate, from Ask Kate, brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation. This is going to be another one of our response videos. I got two really great emails this week um, in response to some of my videos, and I wanted to share those with you guys um, so that everybody could benefit from these really smart questions that I'm being asked. So my first question comes from a mother with um, an eight-year-old son with NF1 who was diagnosed when he was pretty young. Um, and they live in a state where there's not an NF clinic network clinic. Um, so they're over on the East Coast. And so she just shared a little bit with me about his background. He has cafe lay spots and freckling, um, no tumors they're aware of, um, and he's a spontaneous mutation, so the first kid in their family with NF1. Um, he does have significant aut autism and a pronounced language delay, according to mom. Um, and there's just she was sharing not a lot of great information f about NF1 where she lives, um, and she wanted to follow up with me to find out if there was anything she should be doing, any questions that she should be asking or testing she would she should request um, for her son to make sure that she's covering all her bases. Um, she did share that he seems to be going through what we call precocious puberty. I don't know that we've talked about that in any of our videos, but essentially this just means that um, kids who start puberty earlier than we would expect them to. Um, this can be a part of NF1 for very a lot of different reasons um, and something that um, this child was referred to endocrinology which is a specialist who looks at the way that hormones impact the body. Um, as a result of, of that early puberty he's going to have an MRI done um, and the, re the reason for that is that in some cases early puberty can tell us that there might be uh, a tumor that's pressing on part of the brain that's kind of encouraging puberty to start. Uh, that is not always the case, but it is definitely a great idea to get an MRI when we see that so that we can just um, take a look at what's going on. So what I told mom is that she was asking great questions and it's really smart as his best advocate to want to make sure that there's nothing she's missing. I agree that an MRI is an appropriate course of action, um, even given the, what we've talked about with there being some risk to the idea of sedation, which he'll most likely need, um, that the benefits of knowing um, what's going on and if there's anything to be concerned about would, in my opinion, outweigh some of those um, risks. Um, I also, she had asked me specifically about why he'd never had an eye exam, which is an interesting question. Um, what I said was that given his age of being eight and the fact that this MRI is going to be done, um, an eye exam may not be necessary at this point. Now I have to be careful in my line of work, I don't like to give medical advice. Generally I like to give uh, general information, uh, be a good sounding board, so I would never tell a parent this is exactly what you should do or you should definitely not do this. Um, what I told her was that the MRI is probably going to tell us anything that an eye exam would tell us, um, but that it's a good question to ask her primary care doctor as to whether a referral to an ophthalmologist might just be a great next step as well. Um, I also shared with mom about the NF Clinic Network. I told her that while there isn't one in the state where she lives, there were several that are um, not a, a great distance away, and if health insurance allows for them to get second opinions outside of their home state, they might just consider reaching out to some of these clinics. Um, some of that might depend on what the MRI shows and what their next um, steps are for care of her son. Um, but, and I, but I do often give people information on clinics that are outside of their home state. Um, the reason for that is that in some cases, if you're just going for a second opinion, your insurance might give special approval to cover those appointments. Um, now, obviously, if you need extensive treatment of some kind out of state, that's going to be a different situation and something you're going to have to work with your insurance company about. Um, and then I also shared with her some resources we have when it comes to NF1 and learning or autism. And so our resource library has the Learning with NF1 brochure, which is fantastic, as well as the Guide for Educators, which I encourage families to share with um, the schools and those involved in your child's um, um, education plan. So it was a great question, and I just wanted to share that with everybody um, because I'm sure that she's not the only one who's wondering, am I, am I doing everything I need to be doing? And I want to encourage you to ask me that exact kind of question because that's something that I can hopefully help respond to. So hopefully this was helpful, and I might have answered some questions that um, other people have been thinking or wondering about. And thanks so much for tuning in, as always. And please continue to email and comment so that we can keep this conversation going. Thanks so much.